Greetings, you gutter skulks. I hope you're doing well. My name is Graham, and welcome to the Crack a Pack here on LRRMTG. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Today, we're opening a pack of Gate Crash that was given to us by Adam from Wraith Games at PAX East 2018. This was a while ago. Thank you, Adam. I hope you are still from Wraith Games, if that's something that you desire. Uh, let's get into the pack. Ah, yes. Crocanura. <clears throat> I'm trying it again. Crocanura, I think? This is when they started really messing around with the, the funky creature types. I mean, they had funky creature types in the original Ravnica set, but Crocodile Frog. Uh... I remember when I was young. Two and a green for a 1-3 with reach and evolve. Hey, it's evolve. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. They have referenced evolve many times since this set in, in kind of entertaining ways. So that's cool, I guess. Anyway, yeah, 1-3 reach flying that gets bigger. Uh, build your own giant spider, why not? Next, Hands of Binding. One in a blue for a sorcery. Tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And Cypher. Conversely, Wizards hasn't referenced Cypher a lot since Return to Ravnica block. Let me explain what it does. The reminder text reads, Then you may exile this spell card encoded on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. I like that the reminder text says you exile it encoded on a creature, but it still doesn't explain what encode, <laughs> encoded is. It's like, this spell has cipher. What's cipher do? Oh, it encodes the card. What does that mean? Anyway, I mean, I, I know that the rest of the text sort of explains it and you can kind of figure it out, but it is weird. Cypher was... I don't know, I thought Cypher was cool, but it was challenging. Massive Raid is our next card. It's one red red for an instant and it deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of creatures you control. It's a massive raid. They're all bursting through the windows and stuff. Cool. All right. Night Watch. Four and a white for a sorcery. Put two, two, two white knight creature tokens with vigilance onto the battlefield. This card was outmoded some number of years later with a sorcery that was just four mana, wasn't it? In, was it a corset or Dominaria? No. Dominaria had a knight that made a knight? I can't remember. Anyway, five mana sorcery for this effect seems, in retrospect, not great. Wild to think that in Gate Crash, we would have cards that are already feeling like power creep has rendered them obsolete. But then this was, checks notes, 10 years ago. <laughs> Wow. Moving on. Ruination Worm. You and me both, brother. Uh, four red green for a 7-6 worm with flavor text. It's neat to see vanilla creatures again. Speaking of 10 years ago, that card seems acceptable. Moving on. Paranoid Delusions. Oh, here we go. Blue and a black for a sorcery. Target player puts the top, or mills, the top three cards, because they've codified that now. Target player mills the top three cards of their library. And Cypher. So, you could maybe do that multiple times and potentially mill somebody out. Maybe? Man, it's so funny that even just from Gate Crash, how different the Oracle text on this card is. Because it's target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. It's just, it's so much cleaner now. Forced Adaptation is a single green mana for a creature enchantment aura at the beginning of your upkeep put a plus one plus one counter on enchanted creature i want to say that this seems like it should be good because it just gets bigger and bigger every turn but for some reason i think that this wasn't very good i think maybe this format was just too fast i think that was the problem this is the format as a reminder that james and i famously broke wide open by simply force picking every two mana <laughs> spell and ruining the pod i the thing is if they ever brought this back to Arena, that wouldn't work, because that only worked because it was a table draft. It wasn't a league draft. So we just took every two drop at the table, and then we were faster than everybody else. That wouldn't work in a in a league draft on Arena, but but it wouldn't stop me from trying. Next is Nav Squad Commandos. Na Nav Squad Command. Where do you put the emphasis on this? Nav Squad Commandos. Probably Nav. Yeah. 
Sure. It's four and white for a three five with battalion. Whenever nav squad commandos and at least two other creatures attack, nav squad commandos gets plus one plus one until end of turn, untap it. Battalion, that was the Boros mechanic. You want to attack with a lot of things all at once. This is a 3-5 five for 5, so it's not good. Sage's Row Denizen is 2 and a blue for a 2-3, and whenever another blue creature enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Or they mill. They mill. Demir was trying to trying to mill you out. They could do it. Ah, the Razor Tip Whip. What is this? <laughs> I don't remember this at all. Two mana, artifact, one and a tap and it deals one damage to target opponent. Did we try to kill people with razor tip whips once? Did we have like many of them, like three or four? James is nodding, yeah. We tried to, I, it might have been successful? Maybe it was successful. I can't remember, that sounds just stupid enough to work. <laughs> razor tip whip. That's, I mean, at least it's cheap. It probably shouldn't even cost two mana. All right, fair enough. Okay, we're into the uncommons now. Serene Remembrance. Single green mana for a sorcery. Shuffle Serene Remembrance and up to three target cards from a single graveyard into their owner's libraries. Haha, -ha, that's how you stop the Demir from milling you out with this terrible card, this card. This acceptable card. Anyway, Demir Keyrune. Key runes were good. Three mana, artifact, taps to add blue or black to your mana pool, and then for blue and black, it becomes a 2-2 blue and black horror artifact creature token until end of turn, and is unblockable this turn. The cycle of key runes was actually pretty good. They all turned into creatures, the creatures had interesting abilities, they were a mana rock, certainly better than the clue stones, but I've popped off about them before, so I shan't bore you with it again. Last uncommon now, incursion specialist. One and a blue for a 1-3 human wizard. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, Incursion Specialist gets plus 2 plus 0 oh, and is unblockable this turn. <laughs> Work for the Demir again. That depends. Tell me more about this maze. <laughs> What's going to change your mind? Well, this is a real big maze. Uh, it's implicit. It's got that going for it. And this guy's like, you know what? I'm in. And we have a mountain and a card about building a magic deck. Most magic decks work best when they're about 40% land and 25 to 40% creatures. Some decks can work with other amounts, but start at these numbers. And if you're not sure, learn more at magicthegathering.com. Sure. Oh, and an ad for the IDW comics featuring Dak Faden, the greatest thief in the multiverse. Anyway, our rare is... Ba -ba -ba -ba. <sighs> Five alarm fire. One red red for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage, put a blaze counter on five alarm fire. Remove five blaze counters from five alarm fire, and five alarm fire deals five damage to target creature or player. I don't know if that's very good. Because you want to get it out early, so you're spending your third turn playing it, and then you get a counter, and then maybe next turn, let's be generous and say on your fourth turn you get to play two creatures and one of them has haste. You got two more counters. Assuming that you connect. Folks, I don't think this card's very good. That's a shame. All right, so one of my first picking that's not Razor Tip Whip. <laughs> this pack's worth about a buck fifty, I should say. And it's, there's no real standouts. I guess, I, you know, Croconeur is looking better and better now that I look at the rest of the pack. I might take the Demir Key Rune, perhaps. Or... Sage's Row Denizen? Yeah, this is not a great pack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna level with you. It's not, not outstanding. So yeah, I guess I'll take that key rune and try to <laughs> mill people out. I'm gonna wheel the other cards. Anyway, hey, thanks Adam from Wraith Games at PAX East 2018 for this pack of cards. I appreciate it. Always fun to go back to Gate Crash. Uh, until next time, a reminder that this show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. We really appreciate it. Until next time, I have been Graham, joined by James on Tech, Matt edits these, Heather gets them online. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye.